All right. So in today's video, what we're going to go over is, I guess, part one in about like a five part series I'll be doing about how to read a car's passage um, kind of actively and staying engaged. And so the first technique I'm going to go over today is how to preview the questions, um, kind of how to skim them so that you can get a feel for what you're reading before you start uh, jumping into a passage. So really quick, kind of a brief overview of why this technique is helpful. Um, is a lot of times people get bored when they read a car's passage. So if you skim the questions and look for keywords, topics, maybe the names of people, um, you're more likely to stay engaged in the stuff that you're reading because you're going to have a little bit of an idea of what's going on before you start. So the pros with this is focus and kind of helping you keep track of what you're reading uh, before you even start. The cons is that sometimes this can take up extra time uh, when you're doing a passage. So really try these out for a couple of days, see if you like it. Um, and ideally it should be something that you're just clicking five to 10 seconds really fast through the questions. So I'm gonna walk through an example of kind of how you can preview the questions and what you should keep an eye out for. So I have this passage pulled up from the Khan Academy cars uh, kind of website. This is a great resource to use because they made them in partnership with the AMC. We have about four questions to work with. So in case you're interested, this is the passage called Living in a Rational Society. So I'm just going to scroll over to the end and we'll go over kind of what we can skim from this. So uh, the main thing with skimming a question is you don't want to focus on the actual words that make up the argument um, or kind of like the question that they're talking about. So things like most likely, least likely, author's argument, most likely suggests, all that kind of stuff. We just want to look for what are some hints about topics that maybe are going to be mentioned in the passage. So I'm just going to read the question stem and kind of break down for you what you can look for. So here it says the author's argument suggests that the primary motive of employers to make humans work with machines is to, and so if we're thinking back as to, okay, I'm going to cross out some of the stuff that's more about what the question's asking for, is we can take out this stuff. And what we may want to know from the passage is employers who make humans work with machines and maybe why that was the case. Now, if you're skimming it, it's going to be a lot to remember. So probably the core of what you can remember is humans working with machines and see if that's mentioned in the passage because it should be tied to employers. Um, and that's keeping it really simple. So why do you not want to focus on wording like that? You don't want to get preoccupied with that kind of stuff because it's a waste of time. We're not trying to answer the questions before we even read the passage. So use this as an opportunity to prime yourself before you do that. And let me... Okay, so here is the next question. Uh, it says a common thread in the discussion of fast food and the discussion of suburban housing is that people today. Um, so if we're just thinking about words that stand out to us, these words are kind of comparing some of the stuff going on. So what we mostly want to just focus on is the stuff about fast food, maybe where they talk about it in the passage, and also stuff about urban housing uh, or suburban housing. So these are the two things we want to focus on. And from there, uh, we'll just move on to the next question. So for this one, it says information in the passage suggests that a rationalized travel agency would emphasize. So this one's pretty interesting uh, because it doesn't give us too much to work off of. We just maybe want to keep an eye out for something about something that's rational, maybe a rational process in the passage. Um, maybe keeping an eye out for travel agency would help. However, this feels like a reasoning beyond the text question where maybe they're giving us some kind of information that's not in the passage. Just based on kind of the structure of the question as well as the answer choices, all of these are different, different scenarios. Um, and we don't know which ones are mentioned in the passage. We don't know what's going to be talked about. So the safest thing to keep track of is rationalize and maybe a travel agency or what that would look like. But this is probably the best thing that we can keep track of. Where do they talk about a rational process? All right. And this is the last one. It says, suppose that the employee responses to working conditions in fast food franchises in paragraph four also apply to entry level assembly line workers and da 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 da. So I'm going to skip the whole last sentence because all of that is more of what the question's asking for. And we don't need to focus on that right away um, because we want to save time and just skim some stuff. So the main thing that kind of points out is stuff in paragraph four, 
and stuff about working conditions in fast food franchises. So that's what we want to focus on when we're reading the passage is that when they mention fast food franchises, we want to pay attention to working conditions. Um, if you can remember it's in paragraph four, that's fine. But honestly, it's a lot to keep track of. So if you hit paragraph four and you find fast food workers and what their working conditions are like, that's probably the best way to go about it. Another thing you can always do is you can jot down maybe on like that notepad that the AMC gives you something like paragraph four, maybe fast food and then working so that you know that I'm going to look out for working conditions um, in this paragraph. And then when you find it, you can kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. All right, so that passage was done. It was only four questions. And so we're going to take a look at another passage. I kind of just scrolled down and found a random one. Um, and this one from Khan Academy, Seeing Color Through Homer's Eyes, if you're interested in doing this. So if we skim it, it says, it can be inferred from the passage that the author believes which of the following about contemporary writing, uh, academic writing. And so this is all stuff about the question. Maybe you want to keep track of what the author believes, but you should be doing that for every passage so we don't have to focus too much about it. Um, but what we do need to know is where do they talk about contemporary academic writing and maybe what does the author think about that? So if we just keep this in mind as a broad definition, uh, then when you find it in the passage, you can maybe highlight some details or take a quick note of what they're talking about here. So in this one, it's pretty long. It says it's been suggested that the Iliad and the Odyssey were a patchwork of a great number of ballads uh, woven together from different poets rather than a single work by a poet named Homer. How this affect it. So if you're skimming it, really what just stands out to me is something about the Iliad and the Odyssey um, and something about like different poets and a poet named Homer. So maybe you want to keep track of where do they talk about Homer specifically and if there are any other poets involved in this discussion um, about either what Homer was doing or what the Iliad and the Odyssey are going on. So I'd mostly look for Homer and maybe other poets that they mention in the passage. So here, Gladstone would predict which is the following about the children of an interior decorator who easily distinguished about these kinds of colors. And so, you know, this feels like an outside scenario again, just from the structure of the question itself. Um, I'll probably make another video about those. But the most I would want to really keep track of is maybe just Gladstone and what they say about distinguishing among colors or like distinguishing between things and maybe what kind of skill they're talking about there. But I mostly focus on maybe what's Gladstone's theory um, and anything about like children versus decorator, some kind of relationship going on there. But if you're just skimming, you can need quite a lot to process. So probably just Gladstone is the main focus here. All right, so we're on the last one. It says Homer's sky is starry or broad or great or iron or violet, but it's never blue. And how does this affect the opinions expressed in the passage? Um, and so they talk about some claims and all that kind of stuff. So if you're skimming the question, you get to these like Roman numeral stuff. It's, it's okay to kind of look at it because it'll tell you what to look for. So maybe something we want to find in the passage is Homer's sky. Um, and we may want to really specifically look at Gladstone's claim since it's mentioned in all three of these. That's kind of like the main pattern I see going on here. Um, and what whatever Homer was talking about, was he talking about color and nature? Um, all that stuff. So we need to see what Gladstone's claim was and then what was he referencing with regards to Homer. So basically Gladstone's claim and what he mentioned about Homer in that case, um, that should help us answer this question. So that is a brief overview of kind of how you can skim the questions. When you're doing it really fast, when you're reading, you know, kind of capturing some of those details would be helpful. Um, and so hopefully this was helpful in that process. Of course, if you've got feedback or ideas on other things you'd want to see, please comment it below. I'm uh, happy to help out. Um, and otherwise, happy cars prep, everyone, and hope this was helpful for you.